everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I have something really unusual and yet fun that I'm going to share with you guys. Today we're going to troubleshoot DC electronics. Now you could use this technique on any type of DC electronic. Today I'm going to be repairing a DC electronic for my car. This is a radar detector and this radar detector it has served me well for four or so years, but uh, it doesn't power up anymore. So it could be something simple. I'm betting it's something a little bit more complex. So the first thing that I want to share with you guys is that I was bit by one of my own theories and one of my own laws to repairing things. And that law is that if your device has a fuse, and that fuse pops, there's always a reason for the pop. Always. Fuses don't just naturally pop anymore. The 1980s are long gone. So inside a normal 12 volt DC adapter that you would use in your cigarette adapter in your car, there is almost always a fuse in this component. And if I remember right, there has to be. It usually will be underneath a screw down cap right here under the button. So you can change out the fuse, which I did. It, I think there's a three amp in there before and I put a five amp in. Um, to be honest, I expected it to pop anyway. Expected it, but just in case, I was like, let's just go for it. Just, just in case something happens, but no such luck, all right? So the fuse, it did pop is what it is. I kind of expected that. So inside almost every small DC electronic, there's going to be fuses and there's going to be things like uh, uh, rectifying diodes, which allow power to enter the device and leave the device in one direction. Well, what I have a theory of is that one of those semiconductors, one of those diodes has shorted. I haven't opened this up yet, I can't prove it, but we can use a regulated DC power supply to submit this device to conditions that normally it wouldn't be under. So one of those conditions that it normally isn't able to handle is we can take a fuse like this, and I will take that fuse and I will wrap that bad boy in aluminum. Now, I know already to some of you guys are going, oh my God, you can't do that. Oh, no, no. Yes, you can. Okay. I'm going to take the fuse, stick it in here, stick my button on. Oh, there it goes. Come on. And screw it down. There we go. So basically what I did is I bypassed the fuse. The foil should not burn out. Now comes the special part. Why am I able to take aluminum foil and use it to test this device? Well, the original fuse that was in this device was three amp. So we can simulate that with our regulated DC power supply. So the first thing that you set with a regulated DC power supply is going to be your voltage. Which right here, you can see I'm at 11.7 volts. So let's go ahead and turn that up a little bit. 12.12. Sounds good to me. Now you want to set the amperage, the overload current protection. So what I'm doing is I'm setting it to about six, seven, eight, nine, three amps. Okay. So you short the leads together and then you can set your amps. So now anytime it enters over three amps, like with this guy right here, it will go into overload protection and watch the voltage when that happens. Whoop, see that? Drops down to 0.25 of an amp. Did leave a tiny little pinhole in this guy, but that's okay. It's designed to be used this way. So if you have any questions about a DC component, what you can do and what you should do is hook it up to a regulated DC power supply and you can test that com that device under safe conditions that are repeatable. Who wants to keep replacing fuses? I know I don't. 
So right now, I know that it's popping fuses. And I was bit by my own laws because normally if I pop a fuse, I'm going to open it up and see what's going on. Well, path of least resistance, I suffer from that as well. So I went ahead and threw another fuse in it, connected it back inside my car, and it didn't power up. It popped the fuse almost immediately. So if there was one of those semiconductors that shorted, that would happen. But what I can show you is how many amps it's pulling by connecting it up to this. And we can safely use a shorted fuse with aluminum because this guy right here is acting as the fuse. So on a 12 volt, you, the button is gonna be positive. The uh, rails on the side are gonna be negative. And let's see, does it power up? It does not power up. Okay. All right, let me make sure that my trick of using the foil is shorting it correctly because sometimes it will not. If it's not touching correctly, then you're not going to get current draw, which is what I just experienced, no current draw. So what is possible is that I also just popped a fuse inside this. So the fuse inside the 12 volt adapter was your first fuse. Almost every single device out there that has a battery has internal fuses, almost every single one. Even guys like this, the battery has a fuse, but inside also there are weak links that are built into the electronic circuitry as a failsafe because unregulated DC is one of the most dangerous things out there. It can start fires almost instantly. So what I think happened, if I have no current draw now, oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. So I do have current draw. I had to readjust the foil and I still have no power. So you can see my voltage dropped down to six. I am running a full three amps. It's sucking three amps. 18 watts of power on this guy. Something is probably shorted, all right? So regulated DC power supply, excellent way to check. I'm checking this guy as a component and I'm checking this guy. And is it a little warm? Maybe a, maybe a little warm. Three amps worth of power going through it, a little bit warm. So let's go ahead and open it up and see exactly what's going on. I've never opened this thing before, <laughs> had no intention or will to, but I love surprises. So let's go ahead and open it here in camera and let's see what's going on. So what I was just telling you guys about is that the theory was is if it was shorted and it popped the fuse in this guy and I had no current draw, that means that it also popped a fuse inside here, but obviously it didn't because it was sucking three amps worth of current. All right, well, let's see. Okay, okay, nice, excellent. This is such a good example. All right, guys, here, let me, let me pull some of these covers off so I can show you. Come on, let go, let go. All right, so I gotta be very careful with this guy because this is obviously a lens of some sort for the detector. But what I wanna share with you guys, oh, I can smell it. The burnt electronic smell is such a fantastic and definite thing. So what I want you guys to see is right here, see this discoloration? Now anytime you see chips like these, it's probably gonna be a regulator for your DC rails. See these? Take a look right here. Burnt, burnt, still very fixable. Definitely fixable. I'll have to research uh, what those parts are, maybe even change out some other parts because those look like they are part of the voltage regulation. You see right here, the plus 12. So let's see, I have maybe some shorted components. Uh, there's a capacitor right there. Let's go ahead and continue pulling this guy apart. I'm way too curious now to just let this go. So the reason that this guy probably failed 
is either because one of the electrolytic capacitors is starting to fail itself or because it, these things bake in the hot sun on the dashboard of cars and no electronic device likes handling that none so this guy here sits there in the hot sun all day i get in turn on my car and more than likely what happens is one of those components is shorting internally like one of those electrolytic capacitors or one of these um, semiconductors here shorted and burnt up either one works for me I can see some calibration pots how cool is that so right here right here I wonder if those are for calibrating the voltage rails you see right here some other power handling very neat and I also see underneath this flap, come on, come on, open up. I see some other adjustments. See these guys right here? Very interesting. Well, while I'm at it, let's go ahead and explore what is inside a radar detector. So this isn't just a standard radar detector. This was a really nice one, which is why I'm making a video about it. So it just doesn't die a quiet death. Um, I'm probably going to try and fix it because this one also does laser. It can detect laser 360 degrees worth of laser detection. And I don't know if that ever worked completely correctly, but it is what it is. So right here is the little LCD panel, which was failing. And I bet, yeah, right there. Take a look on the back side. There's a part number. And this guy was getting dimmer and dimmer. And because it was getting dimmer, you know, that's what just happens to LCDs over a period of time, especially when they're exposed to constant UV and heat, which a dashboard is. So technically, I bet I could look up that part number and find this component someplace else. I would bet that I can. So there you go. They're really simple. Just one ribbon cable. Pretty cool. And let's see, you can see I've got a horn right here, which is probably my waveguide for the radar. And I see a lot of shielding. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is separate these boards. And in order to do that, I think I have to peel back some of this. Yep, maybe not. <laughs> oh, well. Come on, where are you? I do see, yep. All right, so there's some interconnects that have, I don't know, eight, nine pins. Oh, there we go, there we go. So there are some uh, interconnects right here. So that's why I was being kind of careful because there's two rows of them. You can see right here, those pins there and down there. I didn't want those to get bent because I am gonna eventually try and fix this. So the bottom is obviously the CPU board. Yep, there it is. Here, let's go ahead and pop it out. Let's pop the whole thing out so y'all can see it. Come on. And I think, yep, just needs a little bit of love. Very interesting engineering. See this right here? At the back of the speaker is a pad, a thermal pad, which it was heat sinking the CPU to the speaker. How neat is that? So, Obviously, that's going to work. Why not? It's exposed to the outside air. The speaker itself helps move air. Seems pretty cool. Okay, what else we got on this guy? I have what are probably my laser detectors. So you can see right here and right here. See how they're shielded? Anytime you see shielding, that's obviously your measurement instrument. So that would be the CPU on the bottom. And this one right here would be, uh, normally that's RAM of some sort. So that's your storage medium that probably has the program for this guy. And this board, looks like this board is power regulation and your measurements are all gonna be, this is probably a comparator in here I'll have to look up those uh, I'll have to look up those codes so this is cool you can see that they have shielding around the horn because 
measurement instruments. They take extra care for shielding. And this is incredible, very unique. Look at the construction. This is, it feels like a pot metal construction held together with screws. I could open it up. I don't know if there's radioactive elements in these or not, kind of like um, radar detectors or um, radar detectors. What am I talking about? Um, smoke alarms. I don't know exactly how this guy is set up. I'm very curious. It's got kind of a chamber where probably the signals come in, they bounce around until they hit the sensor. So that is very cool. But uh, obviously the thing that I'm most interested in is this guy right here. So when you have DC powered devices, the power always comes in and there's always some sort of fusing and power regulation inside the device. Whenever you see a large capacitor, that means that that is on one of your power rails. So that means that right here, this Archi Spark has something to do with the power rails between the mains coming in, which is the DC coming in that's unregulated, and the regulation. So it's in between those two. It could be the fusing. Now, fusing doesn't necessarily mean a fuse. Fusing could be a component that's placed in line to be a weak link. It could be a resistor. It could be a fusible link, a pico fuse. It could be a trace. Sometimes it's just a trace in the board. It's built to be disposable. It's the weak link. And that's what, by definition, a fuse is. So here we go. I'll take a look really close up there. You can see the DC comes in. Uh, the front post is going to be the negative, most likely, and the rear post back there is going to be the positive. And someplace between those two, it's going to be shorted. Yep. So I'll have to go in and check those guys out. I think it's probably this little component right here. Because, uh, here, let me get something to point this out. So between the two rails, uh, or between the negative rail and the positive rail of the uh, incoming power, you can see that there's a little component. Let's see, where is it? This guy right here. There's a tiny little component right here in between the two. So you can see between this rail and this rail is right there. See that little guy right there? More than likely, that is shorted. It's... Um, Normally it's like a coupling capacitor when there is a component between the positive and negative. Uh, it could also be one of those diodes that I was talking about for uh, reverse bias diodes. It's hard to say. I will have to put it under a microscope and take a look at it, but there you guys go. Could be salvageable. I could just clear that off if that is a diode because this is the only power supply I'm ever gonna use. So I could just uh, take it off with the soldering iron so that the short is no longer there. See if it powers up. I bet you it does. Because popping a fuse, entering into a uh, current protection, that's all because that little guy is carbon dyed. It, it's carbon, <laughs> carboned up. I can't even talk. I'm so tired lately, guys. It's carboned up between the positive and negative. And because of that, carbon is conductive. So even semiconductors, when they go to a short condition, which are diodes, MOSFETs, things like that, when they short, it turns into like carbon and carbon is now conductive and conductive means short. So <laughs> that is why I'm popping fuses. Anyway, guys, I hope you like this video. It's been long enough. That is the insides of a radar and laser detector. Not really relevant to medical equipment, but it absolutely is because when you are troubleshooting DC rails, you're going to see the exact same things. You're going to see an input for DC, unregulated DC usually, and then the board itself is going to have some sort of power regulation built into it. And from there, it's going to create its own rails for three volt for the processor and probably uh, higher rails for um, functions like motor drivers and stuff like that. But anyway, this guy here, it clearly just steps the voltage down to something, whatever it is, probably three volts because we have 12 volts coming in. You have a CPU and I only see 
one capacitor really so I bet you it steps it down to like three volts and this whole board probably operates off like three volts pretty cool anyway guys hope you enjoy this video if you do give me a like and uh, stay tuned because we're gonna be doing some tool giveaways coming up very very soon in the next couple days